let's take a quick look at how to use MySQL on Windows. Okay, now if you follow the instructions for how to install MySQL from the first week, uh, the week of August 31, then you've already installed MySQL on your computer. If not, please go ahead and do that process before looking at this video. Okay, uh, you've already installed MySQL and you've also installed a product called Heidi SQL. I'll show you how to use both of those products now. Uh, if you followed my instructions, the way in which you would have installed MySQL is to have MySQL start as soon as your computer starts. So the first thing you want to do is to test that MySQL is actually running on your computer. Check that. To do that, go down to the bottom here. Uh, see this small uh, up arrow. Click on it and then you should see this icon here. It says MySQL notifier. Okay, so click on that. Then it gives you this information that MySQL 56, that is 5.6, is running. Okay, now that's because we've installed it in such a way that whenever your computer starts, MySQL also starts. Okay, so you don't have to go through the step of starting MySQL. Uh, you can leave it as it is. Okay, so now MySQL is actually running. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to connect to this MySQL. Okay, uh, we connect to MySQL from this program called Heidi SQL. So MySQL is a server program. It is a database manager. So all the data and stuff we keep on that. In order to access all the data and to perform SQL and stuff, we'll be using this program called Heidi SQL, which also you already installed. So I'm going to start Heidi SQL. And the first window that it comes up with is the login window. Right? So uh, to use your correct credentials to connect to the MySQL database. Now we installed MySQL with uh, the username as root and I had also recommended for you to make the password also as root so that it's easy to remember. So I'm going to enter the password and leave the port alone 3306 that's the default port just as let it be and then we can say okay uh, open. Okay then what it does is it opens up your MySQL, uh, it connects to the MySQL server and then uh, the name of the database is basically going to be, uh, you know, whatever your name you gave to the database when you installed it. It shows you a certain set of default databases that come installed with MySQL. Okay, world is a database that has, uh, you know, city, country, etc. You can take a look at it at your own leisure. Okay, now the important thing is in order to use, uh, of course, you can use Heidi SQL to create tables and enter data and so on into the system. Okay, you can do that. But what we are going to do in this course is mainly uh, importing database files that I provide to you. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, if you look at Blackboard, if you look at the, uh, the first le lecture for this week, you would have seen that I'm using a certain database uh, for you know suppliers, parts and projects and so on. And shipments and I've made that database file available on Blackboard. Okay so if you go there under Blackboard uh, you'll see that file as uh, okay so you'll see that as database import files for supplier par project parts example. Okay so of course you should download that file onto your computer somewhere and then once you've downloaded it you can then import it into Heidi SQL. So I'm assuming that you've already downloaded that file. That file would be called spjnew.sql. Okay, now that you've saved your database file somewhere on your computer from Blackboard, we can now import that file into IDSQL or actually into our MySQL database. So it's very easy to do that. Just say file and then uh, we can say load SQL file and Go to wherever you've saved that file. In this case, I've saved it here. So I've come here. So navigate to wherever you saved the file and then select the file. The first file is spjnew.sql. So do that. And then it loads the file into uh, an SQL window. And all you have to do is just click on execute SQL. Click on this icon. Okay. It'll give a warning. Forget about the warning. It doesn't matter. Just say OK. Okay, so after that, if you go to the name of your database, whatever name you gave it, doesn't matter, I gave it QB, uh, right click and then say refresh, you should now see the new database, SPJ new, somewhere out there. Okay, 
So in fact, if you click on that small arrow, you see all the tables. I can click on the table and then click on, uh, you know, the table description. Then you see the, uh, the column names, part number, part name, color, weight, city. Um, then you can look up similarly the, for the other tables. Projects is JNO, JNAME, city. Uh, and then shipments is this, suppliers, supply. And then for each of the tables, you can actually even look at the data in the table. Okay, so if you click on the data tab, you'll see the actual data in the tables. So you see the parts table, the projects table, etc. Okay, so that's how you load the database file. Now, once you've loaded the database file, you can actually go into this uh, SQL window and uh, you know right-click it, and then I think you can clear the contents of it to clear it from whatever we had earlier out there. Just making this window slightly wider and here you can actually type in SQL statements like for example select shop from suppliers right and then you can click on this arrow it'll run it and then you see the uh, the actual data okay uh, so similarly you can say select in fact I don't have to type it all on one line I can say select star from suppliers and it runs it and then I can say for example select uh, supplier number comma supplier name from suppliers and you see it gives us okay so and it also shows you that there are two columns and five rows okay just in case you're interested uh, how many results you've got back okay now for the assignment you have to also load a different database it's called university.sql so you'll follow the exact same procedure, right? In order to do the assignment, the SQL for all the assignments, of course, you can answer all the questions without uh, trying it out on any SQL at all, but that would not be a sensible thing to do. You want a lot of practice with SQL and practicing on a system to, uh, to actually try out the queries, see the answers, see if the answers are correct. That's where the learning occurs. So I strongly advise you that you should practice SQL on a real MySQL system rather than just understanding from what I'm talking in class. Okay, so to load that file, you just say file, uh, once again, uh, load SQL file, and then say university.sql. Okay, so it opened university.sql. Once again, we can run university.sql. You make it the same warning. It's all right, let it be. Uh, and once again, we go here, uh, right click, refresh, And we now see this new database. The database is actually called college. Okay, even though the file was called university.sql, the actual database is called college. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and then you can see the data is all there. So you can once again go to courses and then look at uh, the table description, course ID, course name, colors, etc. Also look at the data in each of the tables. There we go. Okay. And then you can again type SQLs. So I'm going to right click this. Clear the contents. Now that we've already loaded it, we don't need it anymore. And then we can type SQL just like before. Select on star students. students in the students database so let's go to students table let's go to the students table and verify really that there are 25 rows okay indeed there are 25 rows okay so this is really all you need to use mysql on your on windows 